Zowie S series is the latest series of mice to be released by the eSport centric peripheral company Zowie. The S1 and S2 have recently been released in a matte black coating. In this review, we're going to be taking a look at the Zowie S1 and the slightly smaller Zowie S2. As this is my first review on the channel, a quick rundown of my previous mice is in order so that you can better understand my reasoning behind some of the opinions I have on these mice. My first ever mouse was a Razer Death Adder, which I used for about two years, before moving on to a Zowie EC2A, which was my main for around three years. I'm now currently using a Zowie FK2, which I've enjoyed using ever since. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go over the mice and its features. The shape is a continuation of the FK series of Zowie mice, and whilst the shape complements an ambidextrous design, the mouse lacks side buttons for left-handed users. If you're a right-handed user and you find ergonomic mice such as the Zowie EC2A and the Razer Death Adder to be too uncomfortable, an ambidextrous mouse may suit your hand better, as its symmetrical design allows for more consistency when making left and right adjustments in-game. Taking a look at the rear of the mouse, there is a noticeable difference in the way that it curves in comparison to a mouse such as the FK series. This is because the S series is aimed at being an ambidextrous solution for palm grip users and the mouse reflects this design by slightly raising the lowest point of the rear and having a more pronounced hump to fit your palm better. The result is that the mouse fits the palm without your wrist touching the pad and dragging along. I'm really glad that Zowie has made this change because I feel like it's really going to give palm grip users a lot more options when it comes to choosing an ambidextrous design. It's too much. <laughs> the mouse is also slightly raised at the front in comparison to the FK series. I was okay with the height of the front buttons on the FK2, however, as the rear shell has also been raised, it makes sense as to why this is also followed suit. There are noticeable comfort grooves on the left side, and there's more room for your index and pinky fingers on the right. This allows for both 131 finger grip and the standard 122 finger grip. I personally had issues trying to hold the FK2 with a 122 grip as my fingers did not fit on the side of the mouse and attempts to adjust my grip resulted in my fingers either dragging on the pad or becoming cramped. So I'm really glad this change has been made. The overall shape of the S series is also slightly shorter in comparison to other mice such as the FK series and the Glorious Model O. This allows for the S series to address some criticisms that the FK series has about being too long. This shorter design also allows for vertical movements to be more consistent and precise. I actually found this change to be quite jarring at first, as I found myself overcompensating for recoil in games such as Counter-Strike Global Offensive and missing menu icons when trying to pick a game mode. The cable has also been slightly raised on the S series to ensure that it doesn't drag along the mouse mount when you're flicking the mouse around. It's only a small change, but it does make a dramatic improvement when you're in-game. Speaking of cable, the one that was sent out on the S2 is easily one of the top non-braided slash paracorded cables available. It's thin enough to easily slide around through your bungees, and it isn't flimsy enough to get in the way of your playing. It's a real winner for me. As with all Zowie mice, the Zowie S1 and 2 both have excellent weight distribution and have no coil rattle slash sounds when shaking around. I wanted to take a small segment out of this review to make a direct comparison between the S2 and the S1, as there are noticeable differences between each. For starters, the S2 weighs in at 82 grams, and the S1 adds an additional 5 grams due to its larger proportions. The mice both measure out at 29mm at the front of the buttons, so those who choose the larger S1 will not be subject to more rays from the cable or higher sitting buttons. The thumb rest on the S1 also provides slightly more room for the thumb in comparison to the S2, something you may want to consider if you have larger hands and worry about clicking the side buttons in by accident. There is only a single millimetre in difference between the height of the top hump. The width is where the dimensions change a little more, with the S1 being 2mm larger at the front corners, the thumb grips and the rear comfort groups. These small changes equate to the S1 fit of the palm more fully and providing more room for your index and pinky fingers. Based on my hand size of 18 by 9 cm I personally find the S2 to be more comfortable compared to the S1 which feels a little large for my tastes, so if I had to choose between one or the other it would definitely be the S2. The 3360 sensor performs flawlessly in this mouse although I do struggle to see a noticeable difference between this sensor and the 3310. I would only consider upgrading to a 3360 if you have issues with tilt slam or if your sensor is prone to spinning out. Before we move on to the buttons of the mouse, here's an obligatory sound test.
The S series also benefits from having larger buttons on the left side, with no buttons on the right. It's an unwelcome change if you're a left-handed user, however, this change benefits right-hand users dramatically, as the lack of buttons provides a more comfortable grip for your pinky and ring fingers when holding the mouse. Speaking of the buttons, they're nice and clicky and don't have any travel. No complaints from me. Sticking to the focus of being a plug-and-play mouse, Zowie have continued to implement their polling rate button, which was first seen on the ECB series. This is a certainly nice to have feature if you find yourself flicking through the options. Moving on to the DPI button, Zowie was one of the first companies to really think about where to put your DPI button on a mouse, and it enabled other mice to definitely think about button placement. The continuation of the DPI button being on the bottom of the Zowie range has influenced other esports centric mice such as the G Pro Wireless, the new Razer Viper, and the recently released Endgame XM1. If you've ever bought a Zowie mouse before, then you'll know that there's only four DPI settings, 400, 800, 1200, and 1600. This is something Zowie doesn't look to be changing anytime soon. Moving on to my criticisms and drawbacks, there are a few things to expect if you buy a Zowie mouse, one of the which is that the mouse will not come with drivers. This is a reflection of Zowie's idea to create a no BS mouse with focuses entirely on esports. The other is that if you're looking at getting an RGB mouse, then Zowie is the wrong company to buy a mouse from. There is an argument to be made that Zowie could have tried including a 3389 sensor instead of a 3360 sensor to tie in with the release of this mouse. However, the only difference between the two is that a 3389 sensor can achieve DPI increments of 50, and as we discussed earlier, the DPI limits on this mouse are fixed. A personal recommendation of mine would be to include a more robust way of changing the liftoff distance on the mouse, as the only way of doing it currently is to hold certain buttons in when plugging the mouse into your PC. So just to quickly wrap things up, I'm really glad with what Zowie has done with the S2 here, I'm really glad with all the small changes that have been made to accommodate palm grip users. In addition to this, the upgraded sensor buttons and scroll wheel are all nice additions to put Zowie on the map again in 2019. I would recommend this mouse to anyone that is looking for a fresh change from their FK1, FK2, SteelSeries Rival 110 or SteelSeries Sensei, even going as far as the Nixius Revel. I hope that you have enjoyed this review of the S series. I would appreciate as much constructive feedback as I can on this review, as it is my first attempt. If this review is well received, I may look into reviewing some of my other favourite mice, such as the FK series, the EC series, the Glorious Model O, the Nixius Revel, and more. But that's all we've got time for today. Thank you very much for making it this far into the video. It means a hell of a lot to me. Please consider liking and sharing the video, because this really helps me out. And if you want to know what my next video is going to be, then feel free to hit the subscribe button. But until then, farewell.